What a familiar scene. We tell this story every year before we dive into the 40 days in the wilderness that is left. We pull it from one of the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and each time we see the same thing happen. Jesus goes up with a, a few of his disciples, and every time these great historical figures appear with Jesus, and every time Jesus is shown to be God's Son, and every time, every time, every time, Peter sticks his foot in his mouth. And I wonder if the other disciples rolled their eyes at Peter when he jumped in every time. Lord, it is good for us to be here. What a totally silly thing for Peter to say. Lord, it is good for us to be here. It's almost though as he's congratulating Jesus for having the foresight to bring people up there who knew what to do when Moses and Elijah show up. Lord, it is good for us to be here. Peter has this opportunity to be with Jesus when God does something amazing, something that identifies him as God. Peter has the opportunity to be with Jesus when these great and awesome things transpire. Jesus, Peter knows he's not worthy of standing with the great prophets and the Messiah on this mountain. He is profoundly uncomfortable with seeing God face to face. And Peter, therefore, finds a way to relieve his discomfort with encountering God in a classic way. Looking busy. Peter creates distance between him and the Almighty by finding a trivial task so he can look busy. Peter looks around so the big boss won't find him just standing there and he says, if you wish, I will make three dwellings here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Elijah. But if you're making a dwelling, you are near the moment, not in the moment. Peter can't stand it, and so he decides he'd rather be close to Jesus than be with Jesus. Peter opens his mouth even though he doesn't know what to say, and he offers to do something because he doesn't know what to do. And Christians of all sorts find different ways to do what Peter does in this passage. This is not unique to him. i got to do something because I can't handle what God is doing. So I hide behind, some people will complain. Or a step away into, we've never done it that way. Or we push forward one or two people to encounter God and to do ministry while we fearfully step back. Or we, like Peter, cover up our awe with meaningless chatter and a futile to-do list. We just saw something amazing happen. We just saw our great historical heroes of faith standing alongside Jesus. We don't know how to respond, but we think we have to just start talking to fill the space inside our own heads when they should be silenced by the awe of the situation. But it's much easier to stand before God with a stupid look on my face and say, Lord, it's good for us to be here. It's easier to stand before God rather than with God and find something to do so we don't have to be amazed. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. That way I don't have to just watch God be God. 
Because a true encounter with the Lord will change me and I am absolutely terrified of that change. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my Son, the Beloved. With Him I am well pleased. Listen to Him. Don't you know, Peter? Don't you know what's going on here? Don't you know that you're dealing with your Lord? <clears throat> Do you really want to run off right now? And try to get a little work done. This is my son. The beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Why are you talking. When you could listen to the very son of God. Who has come here. To save the whole world from itself. Why are you trying to make a dwelling when you can dwell with the author of creation as he rewrites your sinful reality into something that is whole again? And Peter, silent. He had not only seen that Jesus is indeed the Christ, but he has heard the Lord speaking to him, and his terror is replaced with wonder. The transfiguration we witness today is when we are silenced with awe for what God has done in our lives, transforming us when we'd rather change the subject. This transfiguration changes everything. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. <clears throat> A huge theme of Matthew's gospel is that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And that theme follows us out of Christmas and restates itself at the transfiguration. Peter finds a way to distance himself from God, but God is with him anyway. God refuses to be kept at bay. God will not be kept at a safe distance, whether we would do that by building shrines on a mountaintop or by hiding from our calling or by putting the details in the way of our relationship with the Lord. God is with us. And the sacrament in which we will soon partake awakens us to the mystery of God's presence in this family <clears throat> of faith. <clears throat> when we hear the word of the Lord, it consumes <clears throat> us and wipes away all the pretense and dwelling-making <clears throat> We can throw at it. It leaves us, leaves us with only our Lord. Once we get out of our own way and allow ourselves to be in that moment rather than simply being near it. And in that moment we are filled with God's Spirit in our lives and it creates a wholeness in us that we cannot even imagine. Because in that moment, all of our fear is swept away, replaced with the assurance that we are standing in the presence of God's Son, whom God dearly loves, and we are fed body and spirit. Because at this table, we experience that God is with us. Lord, it is good for us to be here. Not for the reasons we think. It is good for us to be here because God has chosen to share Himself with us. 
God has chosen to share himself with us, and it's an intimate moment that should not be kept private, that should be kept private, not out of shame, but because moments when God silences us should be cherished. And I think this is why Christ tells the disciples to keep their experiences to themselves until after their resurrect or until after his resurrection. I think it's a recognition that something amazing has happened, but that the moment has passed. We don't get to stay in it. We can just be with God when we have the chance. Instead of building dwellings, we can dwell with Emmanuel, God with us. When God reveals himself to us, we can show enough faith to be silenced. Because we know God's voice is worth listening for. Amen.